Hello, welcome to this rebuild of my castle build in Minecraft. This is actually supposed to be designed for a uh, dwarf in D&D 5th edition to be making his own castle for housing his own new clan in. Well, because I just want to have it visually represented in as detailed as possible, I decided to build it in this. So, well, what you see right here right now is a 100 foot wide by 100 foot wide castle. So it's 100 foot square can see the machicolations and crenellations on the walkway wall, which is on top of the wall wall. The wall itself is three foot thick of solid stone. Uh, considering the type of granite that I would be using, it would be approximately equivalent to a mm, six, seven foot thick wall if it was made from normal blocks like you would normally see in a human castle built any time in our real world history. Now this is actually a rebuild of the castle build that I built previously. Uh, that castle build had a slightly different uh, design to the wall and uh, mainly the towers. Uh, just a second, let me clear up the weather here. Alright. So these front gate doors, these are just placeholders to show you kind of how they work. They're five foot wide pairs of doors that um, are designed such that they will only open outward. <coughs> Excuse me. They will only open outward. They're 10 foot tall, but you've got clearance for about nine foot high, and you got clearance for about eight foot wide coming through these front doors. Now, there is specifically designed a nice uh, angular piece of stone here. And this, all of this stone for the walls and walkways and everything, that's all fully interconnected with all other stone. It's like it was carved out of a single solid piece because it's using one of the uh, magic spells called... Uh, create wall I think it is and basically what it is is it's making more stone that's fully connected to stone that's already there so I've got angular pieces down here I've got that angular piece up there and that's to prevent these doors from being easily broken in now down here along this edge I was considering doing something similar to have it be able to be popped up from inside the side uh, walkways of the gatehouse, but I decided against it because of the interior door design. As you can see, there are arrow slits so that if somebody manages to get through that outer door, they come in here, they're stopped by the inner door, and you can fire a whole bunch of arrows through at them. Now, the inner door only opens inwards, whereas the outer door only opens outwards. However, this is actually designed this way on purpose in order to, uh, how should I put it, in order to create an even stronger defensive measure. So when these are closed, there is actually going to be a steel and stone steel reinforced stone plate that is held up here by pulleys and 
the pulleys go through small holes down into these side passages, which you can see the openings for firing the arrows. And what that does is it's just passageway down into there and you can use your troops to open the locking piece. And what the locking piece does is it just lowers down and it will stop right about there, right along the top edge, and it's all the way across, full 10 foot width, and it presses against this back wall here. This back wall pushes against this walkway. This walkway pushes against the back wall of the castle itself, meaning they would have to essentially just completely destroy the doors in order to get in. It's a very secure method of locking the doors. The doors themselves wouldn't look like this. They would be uh, wood and steel construction or wood and stone construction. And yeah, they're, they'd be really sturdy. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, each one of these blocks is one foot by one foot by one foot, supposedly. Uh, that's what I'm guesstimating my space constraints as. Now in these side passages I have marked off in green is storage, possible storage uh, locations and in green is military storage only so like swords, armor, uh, pikes, uh, arrows, whatnot. If you see these yellow orange carpeting here, that's for if there is a solid door like wood or wooden stone or wooden metal or stone and metal or something along those lines. Just a solid barrier door. Now that's on both sides mirrored of this gatehouse area. Now to the right of the gatehouse when you come in, come in, you turn right, you come over here. This is the forge area. It has a furnace, as you can see. It has a water trough area for quenching swords, spears, you name it. Uh, it's actually long enough that you could do a full-on pike, a uh, real-world style pike, if you wanted out of steel. Uh, it's primarily designed for being able to do swords and spears, though. Uh, oh, and ballista bolts, considering that uh, the top of the towers in the front will have ballista on them. The top of the towers in the back will actually have uh, mangonels. They're basically catapults that launch a whole bunch of smaller sized stones and they're mainly designed for defense against large groups of enemies. And this is just to represent a single large anvil instead of what it's actually showing which is four Minecraft anvils. Uh, this uh, sort of uh, lamp area up above, that's actually pretty accurate because you want to have good lighting for your forge. This purple carpeted area is forge related storage only. That means uh, raw materials, uh, fuel for the fire, uh, swords, armor, whatnot, stuff that's in construction, has been completed, whatnot, anything that's forge related can be stored here. Now for the towers, underneath each of these sets of stairs going up is military storage. This is where the central elevator is, and it's a 5x5 five five elevator, uses pulleys, and it's designed to go up the central corridor all the way up to the top so that you can load 
ammunition very, very easily from the bottom all the way to the top very quickly and easily, and you don't have to have a whole bunch of people running up and down stairs. Now, there is this ledge here, and there isn't supposed to be a gap there. It's supposed to be just a solid piece, but you can't depict it properly in Minecraft. But basically, this is supposed to be a solid wall, not gaps. So the result is, if you had a ultra emergency, the enemy could definitely get into the castle and go searching around and everything, and you had no other choice, you had to hide somebody, this is where you would hide them. It's a two foot wide ledge, you lift them up here on the elevator, they step off over to here, and you lock the elevator here or you lock the elevator up there. If you lock it up there, you can do that. Uh, that's actually smarter because they'll think the elevator's just there uh, and they won't realize that there's a ledge here for people to hide on. And if you're down here looking up, you can't see the ledge. You'd, think it, you'd just see an elevator. You wouldn't be stepping into the elevator. You'd look around like this and that's it. That's just basic logic of what normal attackers would do. So three foot wide passageway, three foot wide stairs all the way up to the wall height. Now the wall is actually supposed to be four and a half feet wide uh, before this wall comes up, uh, this interior wall. This is a six inch wide wall just basically to keep somebody from falling over uh, the edge and getting injured of any sort when they're, you know, fighting or whatnot. Basically to keep people on here. However, these little gaps down here, that's actually supposed to be a uh, very, very narrow trench, very, very shallow trench that leads to little gaps that feed the water down over to here. which these are the irrigation channels for the emergency crops, the emergency garden area. And there are two of these, one on each side. So all the water is supposed to feed over to these. So that's what that is. And I forgot to mention the top of the this place. Now these Lanterns will not actually be here because uh, it's designed for dwarves, dwarves, and dwarves have uh, dark vision. They don't need any illumination whatsoever to see. So they come up here. Here is the top of the tower, and I forgot to finish that. So ignore that, okay? come up the stairs, you're up here, you can fire down at anything, anywhere, all over the place. Got really good field of view. This is actually how it would be visually, is through these machicolations. And you've got good field of view. These are wrong. That one's wrong got this small wall to keep you from falling down onto the stairs but you can always lean over and use it as a lean over if the enemy are assaulting up the stairs you got a nice little kill zone here and you got defensive area right here you just keep firing it's a great little defensive method now up on here this is of course a seven foot by seven foot area with a five foot by five foot reserved area for the uh, ballista and in the back it's f reserved for the mangonels. Now they are sitting up on this platform in order to be able to fire over the walls reliably at good distances. They also will be sitting about a foot above that platform in addition due to the way that they're designed so that 
anywhere that you can go that would be visible by that little torch that I have marked there. Anything that can be seen by that, that can be seen by the operator of the siege weapon and can destroy anything that is there with the weapon, provided they're accurate enough of a shot and it does enough damage. Should be fairly easy for it to see and hit and destroy just about anything. So just as an example, that entire village there, it's really not a village. That would be about the size of a farm, a small farm. That one's about 200 feet out. Uh, about 160 feet is about the closest that it could see. And it should be able to fire out almost to where you see on the horizon from here. So that's a pretty good field of view, don't you think? Anyways, on to the crop area. Now, it has uh, irrigation channels there, but the irrigation is not the only thing there is. Since it rains and everything, it needs to go through here. It gets filtered by the plants and whatnot, and it gets irrigation through everywhere. Now, both sides feed over into a reservoir, which is above the gatehouse. This is a rather large reservoir. I believe I calculated it out to about 35 tons of water storage capability for this uh, reservoir. The reservoir itself has access from these areas in order to, you know, just lower a bucket and grab a bucket of water. However, it also feeds down directly via a large pipe down into there, which is intentional uh, because this is where it would most need the uh, water feed. And that's the emergency. When the water's too low to get a bucket into it, you just drain a little from here because this drains out from the bottom. It also drains out any silt that may be uh, gathering up in the reservoir and it can easily be cleared out of here. It's just smart little logical little bit of thing that really took no effort to do. Now because of the way that I have set up for the interior structure areas there is uh, plenty of space for a nice little cafeteria-like area. So you've got a, a oven slash smoker slash uh, fire pit here and it's got everything required for that. You got your fire down in there. You've got nice counter space slash uh, uh, table space. You've got that here is table space as well. The lanterns are intentional because there aren't going to be exclusively dwarves in this castle. There will be visitors, or at least there is supposed to be visitors eventually. And so they may need the light in order to be able to see to eat. That's also why there are lights along here. Because these are the guest quarters. This is second floor. I'll show you how to get up here later. Three foot high wall so that you don't fall off. Four foot wide walkway because why not? The doorways are four foot wide by seven foot high. Which should be enough for any uh, race to be able to fit through that 
would be a player character race anyways. Uh, the beds are four foot by seven foot. There is space for storage of whatever you have. There is a table for you to do whatever. And there would normally be a chair here, but it's really hard to depict a good, accurate chair for at the table. And I don't know if you were wondering, but this is actually a bathroom. Uh, these are supposed to be solid walls. This is to denote a uh, leather wall hanging like substance. Uh, so basically a leather curtain that hangs from here to give a little bit of privacy and uh, air isolation to the bathroom. Toilet, really hard to depict, but uh, you know, it's not a three foot by three foot toilet. It's more like a uh, two foot, two and a half foot toilet, I guess. But basically it's a toilet. That's all there is to it. Uh, you would place a bucket in there and, you know, haul it out and toss it over the wall when you're done filling it. All right. So, the lantern, that's accurate because, you know, it's guest quarters. So, there are four of these on each side. So, basically, there is guest quarters for up to eight people. Now, down at this level, on this side of the castle, is a barracks. There are 32 beds. They are all five foot long beds. And they're three foot wide. So any race that can fit on a five foot by three foot bed and less than two and two and a half foot or less vertical clearance can fit in these beds here. And there's 32 of them. So it's basically a barracks. Uh, two toilet bathroom for air isolation and whatnot and a couple of lanterns because this is living space and even dwarves kind of prefer a little bit of illumination at times. Now, I don't know if you'll notice, but for each entryway that I have, there is a furnace here. And there is a door here, of course. So the furnace heats up at the entryway so that all of the air in here should be approximately equalized among all of this area because each side heats up at the coldest location. So middle of winter, you got these going full bore and it will keep everything in here nice and toasty. Somebody opens the door, you get the furnace there to keep the cold out. So, it's just basic logic, the way thermal works. Now, that's for the barracks. That's 32 people can fit there. But since this is designed as a uh, fortress for making his own land. That means that he would need space for families. Well, there isn't that much space specifically for families initially. Basically, it would be they would stay in these rooms until they could build a house outside of the fortress itself. Or use this here, the tunnel entrance, the mining entrance, and build some tunnels and underground housing, which is the more typical location for a dwarf to reside. However, considering my particular dwarf character is a uh, less dwarfish dwarf, um, he's more of an unusual type of character. He likes profession that is uh, less dwarf-centered 
profession. Uh, he's a dwarf ranger wizard, which basically means that he's doing things that dwarves normally do and would normally get them excommunicated or uh, shunned or whatnot from most plants, which is part of why you could play him as a character. Normally dwarves don't go out and about unless there's a reason to otherwise. Anyway, so there is a mine entrance for raw materials, stone, whatnot, or for expansion of living space. I'm just not designing that right now. There is storage space here, a work table here, and a lamp for those. Now, back to the family. There are actually three identical and one unusual. These are what the identical ones look like. We got a small bathroom here. We got a master bed for a couple, which is a five by five bed. And then you have the kids bunks for up to four kids. And you could also set up a cot or a a wooden bunk bed over here if you had more kids that you wanted to house here. Or you could have a large cot here for another uh, set of parents and have two families here. It's up to whoever lives here. But this is about it. Now there is also the furnace right next to the door. This is present on all of these bottom level areas. This is part of why there is a guest quarters. Because these are designed to heat up the guest quarters evenly, nice and smooth, right on through the floor and through this little walkway area. So you got three identicals, and then you've got this one over here, which is smaller. It's for a smaller family, a family with only two kids or maybe three or four kids if you add in, you know, cots. It's also better for a uh, new family, so uh, parents that have a, an an infant or you know something like that they can figure it out this is just how it's set up and they can do with it what they will now you come in that door and you're probably wondering why this walkway well the primary reason for it is it's the best way to lock this door the secondary reason is to give a nice defensive location if the enemy breaks through and starts going around inside the castle. Because you can have a whole bunch of defenders all on here, and the only place that the enemy can go is underneath there. And that's a very narrow corridor. These supports are to make it able to be supported properly and not sag or crack or collapse under its own weight. Uh, they are spaced wide enough that any um, caravan of any sort, um, you know, a large wagon or something like that, can fit through all the way down and go all the way to the stables. There's one very large stable for like teams of uh, horses or goats or whatnot that are pulling a carriage. And there are a pair of smaller ones for like uh, if visitors came on horseback you could have like two horses each in each of those sides. And it's just a generic area. Now of course there is extra military only storage here 
for these back towers, which house the mangonels. Uh, the extra storage is for the fact that they require large stones that they throw. And that uses up a lot more space than a whole bunch of uh, ballista bolts. So the way up for those second level areas is right through here. Up to the five foot wide stairs. You got a five foot wide corridor. Come up here. You got a five foot wide access to the storage area. Everything blue here, that's just general storage. You can store whatever you want to here, be it heavy, light, it doesn't matter. It fits, it's the right way, it's good to go. You can store anything that can fit in that space. Come down these stairs, it's only a couple of feet of stairs, and you got access to your walkway. Now on that far side I told you there is a cafeteria area. Now on this side, it's just empty space. You can do whatever you want to with this. This is just general space. You know, if you wanted to have it be a um, uh, extra space for eating, you could set up tables here. If you wanted it to be refugee sleeping quarters, they could do that. They could sleep in here, camp out, whatnot. It's just a generic space. And of course, the doorways for this and the eatery both have a leather hanging. Now, each of those side spaces also have ac access straight up to here for the water. Just direct access. Because, why not? And then you've got access for your walkway. All the way back to your storage area. Got it well defended. you got lots of space to work with. And you've got very sturdy construction. And that about covers it. Oh, almost forgot. Up on top of these walls, same level as the garden, you have just generic space. This is up on top of the roofs for the guest quarters. But this is a much smaller, a thinner layer on top for a roof. So, this light blue marks the perimeter for what can be, where you can store stuff, but it has to be lightweight stuff. So, uh, if you got like uh, empty boxes or um, cotton storage, um, tarps, some arrows maybe, you know, just lightweight stuff, not big, bulky, heavy stuff, but just general stuff. You can store it anywhere on these roofs in this blue marked area, this light blue marked area. And there are access to the parapet walls next to each tower. And because I know I got this tower built correctly, show you the machicolations that are here. Got great views. You got access to just about everything. And the walls are designed for dwarves, which is why they're four foot tall. Any dwarf that wants to hide just crouches down ever so slightly. They're fully concealed. They want to come out and shoot arrows, they extend up to full height and they fire over, lean over, whatnot, and they can shoot very large swaths of, swaths of area just by leaning. And anywhere they can't get by going over, they can get by going down like this and firing down through the mischief 
Now, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but there are machicolations inside the tower itself. So you can fire down from here as well as from the top of the tower. Because these walls here are cantilevered out past the edge of the actual fortification walls, which are only three foot. So I cantilevered out for here, and the machicolations and crenellations up on the top are out an additional foot wider. Which, that means from the very top, you can't hit the bottom of the tower. But, from these, you can. Which makes it fully defensible. But, having it be on the top and on here allows you additional troops being able to fire at a much larger amount of area from a much safer position than if they were just on the walls or just up on the top of the tower. They can fire over a much larger area from a much safer position. Now, I was considering putting in uh, arrow slits up here, vertical and horizontal, but I decided against it because I don't really need it. The, the fortress is sufficiently defensible as it is with all the crenellations and machicolations as it is currently designed. So, oh, almost forgot. This is the last bit. There is access. Two foot wide, very very now, so easily defendable. Access to the roof of here, which is just the walls and the roof of the uh, reservoir, the water reservoir, which is above the uh, gatehouse. Has a nice little shelter area here for you to not get rain down on you as you're going down the stairs. Other than that, that's it. That's pretty much it. That's my castle. Hope you enjoyed.